I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Got another fun game with Marceau, and we'll talk about the tips, tactics, and techniques to make it a successful, fun match. But before we begin, like, subscribe, all button below. Appreciate all the support. We've actually hit 2,000 subs, so uh, here's a link above. Do you want to click on it to put your name in for the drawing for a free premium DD giveaway as an appreciation appreciation for all you guys have done for me, the channel, and the community, and uh, making this great place to learn about tips, tactics, about ships, and uh, World of Warships. So let's get right Right to it, Marceau, one of my favorite destroyers, probably the probably the most OP destroyer in the game, highest DPM in the uh, the lineup of tier 10 destroyers, and perhaps above. So uh, what we're doing here, here, if you can see the strategy on the sleeping giant, going straight into the giant cap at alpha and going just literally speed boosting my way in there. That's the strategy, and then going straight into Bravo. That's our strategy starting off the bat. I'm being a good destroyer player, but E1, uh, engaging destroyers right off the bat, spotting them, spotting enemy ships, and going in capping as well. So those are my priorities right there. I'm playing objectives. I'm spotting for my teammates. I'm killing destroyers if they uh, come across me, and uh, really doing everything a uh, destroyer should be doing. I think it's a lot of new players out right there don't understand the objectives. I've seen a lot of that in the comments, like, hey, what are you doing? Why aren't you're playing the objector why you're sitting in the back of the map when blah 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 and and probably i'll do a video about why there are so many blowout games uh because of these reasons um one i think it's because of you know, obviously in certain game modes newer players don't understand objectives number two is submarines and cvs you can't really sneak around the map anymore and i think even a submarine can literally hold off an entire flank battleships are then it's too scared to move forward or they'll get spammed in he partly because of me uh, you know people like me which are liking gunboat dds and we really are just spamming he from long distances and then i can see understand uh, that logic right there where a lot of you know battleship players or cruiser players are really going to have to literally tuck behind islands or just hold in the back kind of just tanking and just sitting there waiting sniping from distances and i understand there is an issue there with the cv subs and maybe even um, the dd mains like our, myself I just like to sit and smoke and shoot HE spam from long distances, which, again, that's a tactic. I mean, it's just the way that people have to figure out how to overcome it. I think submarines were the, the case to overcome DDs like that. Uh, they're able to sneak in enemy lines and so forth. But um, as you can see, I already capped Alpha, and boom, right off the bat, we get the North Carolina. Sorry, I had to interrupt my discussion there, but, man, I just got shocked and spotted right I did not realize the North Carolina was there. Funny that um, even though we have, man, yeah, I guess nobody was in the middle, so I guess I was the only one spotting. So, again, doing my role as a destroyer player, I am spotting a, uh, a battleship or any kind of ships in the middle there. And uh, we're fast in the Marceau. I like the Marceau. It's gunboats, fast gunboat. It's got that French art armor scheme. And you can see it got torpedoes, and they were getting some damage right there. Pretty awesome. You notice that North Carolina immediately ran away, did not want to engage me. And it's because of this reason right here. A lot of people don't want to deal with Marceau's and Clavers, the French DD line. For that, it's a uh, unique French armor saturation. Look, he fires at us. We're not scared. We just turn. We hit the speed boost on. We're still got the speed boost. Completely wonks that shot, and that's how you do it. So you pretty much are juking shells, causing battleships to take shots at you. They let them in miss, to, uh, you know, sacrificing their shots so they don't shoot your teammates. Another role a good destroyer player plays. And again, I'm turning back around to engage this guy. I got my uh, other set of racket torpedoes, so I'm gonna might as well go in. I'm also starting fires on battleships, so that is another role that Marceau is good at, as well as a good destroyer player, DD gunboat main. That is, if you're a torp boat main, then your your uh, goal is to torpedo a lot of battleships and cruisers at distance and keep them at bay. Again, North Carolina fires doesn't fire at anybody else but me. It can completely misses. And again, we're just constantly burning down. We're taking out the objective. We're taking out a battleship. And we're spotting for our team if anybody wants to shoot at this guy and we do have submarine and this is exactly why boom look at that that's exactly why battleships and other players do not want to push in because of that cancer right there submarines and of course the cancer of a cv player in the back as always i don't think there's a cv in this game but again as a good destroyer player i'm going to go in and cap the objective because uh, guess what nobody else is around and the submarine doesn't want to cap um either so i, I believe the rule is a submarine cannot cap unless they're a sub uh, surfaced or above the surface uh, if they're submerged, they can't really cap uh, like normal. So anyways, I digress. I'm, that's a video for another time. Uh, the other thing, uh, yeah, we'll talk about the video about why people are just getting blown out games. People sitting in the back and, you know, it's becoming more of a stale mate uh, World of Warships game. And um, yeah, there's just too many gimmicks out there that just cause people to be shooting. And again, this is the nature of warfare. You're literally there to... Uh, engage enemies at longer distances to not sacrifice your ship or throw away your ship. So that's just the evolution of technology. You're just be more standoffish. As you can see in today's world, standoffish tactics and uh, technology uh, allows you to survive long longer while mitigating, minimizing your threat to your friendly forces, but m promoting more damage to the enemy. 
aka submarines and CVs. Notice that they take less damage from the enemy, and normally they're the ones that survive the long haul of the game, while everybody else is just dying left and right, and especially the battleship side. So right now we've capped Alpha Bravo, and guess what? Why not go for Charlie? And uh, let's take Charlie at, while we're at it, because everybody else is spread out sitting in the back, so why not go in the middle and take on? I'm not afraid of Marceau because of the guns. Oh, and here we go. we got the... I cannot pronounce that. A Dratico? Yeah. Anyways, we do our other role as a destroyer player. We are spotting other DD players, and we're going to take the fight to them. Now, here's a, you have to know the, the tactics and weapons and techniques of the game here. Notice that the Adriatico basically popped his uh, exhaust smoke, which means he's stuck in a cloud of smoke. He can't spot me because nobody else is spotting for him. There's no red art in the area. Therefore, I have free game to just sit here and wait for him to have his smoke come out. Now, I wish I had a radar because then I'd be able to shoot him in his smoke, and he has nobody spotting for me or for him to see me. And I'm just going to launch torpedoes into his smoke. Hopefully he runs into one. And I'm just watching the smoke. You can see the circle, that white circle on the surface of the, the ocean there, or the water. And you can see where it's going. You can just kind of see gradually. What's his idea? He's probably coming towards me, hoping that we would figure out. Unfortunately, he doesn't have RPF, so he has no idea where I'm at. And eventually his smoke will run out here and it'll pop out. And there we go. He's popped out of the smoke and we have free game to blast this guy. Now, my aiming is terrible on nose-in ships. That's why nosing in, a good technique, it's a nose-in. Uh, unfortunately, the sacrifice is you don't get all your guns on target, but we get all our guns on target, so we're showing a little bit more broadside. And this is exactly why I'd like Marceau. The DPM is just incredible. The rate of fire and everything and just nothing he can do. And I think he's going for the Shimikaze and he takes him out. Our buddy goes down, but uh, we take out the Hydratico, and that is the final destroyer on this side, I believe. I don't know where the other destroyers are. I haven't been spotted the whole time. And again, we're doing our uh, natural technique of, hey, let's go in and cap the objective, and we're going to have all three objectives while the enemy team doesn't. Notice we're leading in points here, and we're doing pretty well. They've lost three ships to R2, and we're going to see, again doing our role as a great destroyer player and uh we'll talk about the marcel a little bit again why i like this over club bear club bear is actually a fine i've actually figured out that club bear with the new legendary mod is pretty manageable it's more of a torpedo boat with the legendary mod but it, it can be a good uh, dd gunboat but you're kind of more standoffish because you'll get spotted from the moon at least Marceau has a 7-kilometer detection range as opposed to the Club Air's uh, 7.8. I think is the lowest you can get it down to. Uh, it's not the greatest, but it's manageable. But you're pretty much a gunboat DD. You're like a Kabarovs or uh, kind of that long-range kind of spotted from the moon and shoot from distance. I think Club Air does a very good job doing that. That's why I like the French DD line a lot, lot better nowadays. And I like Marceau as well. But I actually prefer Marceau over everything else because why... Well, Guess what? It has the same speed, the same hull, the same armor. It's got a defensive fire A at least, a little bit better than Club Air, and it's got torpedoes that go out to 9. The gun reload is incredible, the best in the game, and you really pretty much can do everything you want to do in a destroyer. The only downside is you don't have smoke or heal, so if you do have to engage, you're going to have to rely on speed and dodging and juking at that point. Now, I haven't built... This is more a purely gunboat build, uh, Marceau. They notice the range. I can only get out to 11.5. I normally like guns getting out to 13 to 14 in a destroyer to go out and reach and touch somebody, but you're, this is more for hugging islands and just and dodging Dodging at close range, more of a knife fighter. So right here, we're getting this nice, just sweet spot. And this is your your goal as a destroyer player, a DD one that is, a DD gunboat main one, is really just to sit there. Oh, here we go. We can spot another destroyer. Let's see if we can take out another one of the destroyers. Lightning. Oh, here he goes down. Splash two. That's our second kill for the day. And again, like I said, I was talking about, you can find these little sweet spots behind islands where you can lob shells over and just take out unsuspecting cruisers or radar cruisers or even destroyers, even battleships, that is, uh, and just really burn them down. That's exactly what the Marceau is really good at. Uh, it really takes the fight in the later game where you're pretty much just spamming low health BBs and cruisers, and then, of course, you're hunting down the destroyers. That's why I kind of like the RPF on the Marceau. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I didn't do it for this one because... Uh, I've been playing around with the RPF and back and forth, and uh, yeah, you, you may or may not need it. I mean, it's good for hunting destroyers and submarines down, uh, but you, if, you're, if you're wise enough, you can actually play without RPF. I kind of grew up without RPF in this game where I just kind of, hey, let the destroyer come to me, or I kind of guess with objectives, I noticed that most destroyers will hang around the objectives. So again, does RPF give you a little bit more uh, an advantage? It does, but does it, you know, can you play without it? Absolutely. I think it's really... Uh, you being a little bit more passive aggressive as opposed to with the RPF you're really going out there taking the fight to the enemy and trying to find all the destroyer players and kill them off the map and I've always said if you eliminate all the destroyers on their team you have a greater chance of winning the game that way and you notice that we're actually kind of neck and neck almost I mean even though we're ahead by 400 points the game is still in their favor they have six ships to R7 so we got to be very careful and not to throw the game. Notice that we have the Wujing here, Battleship. Again, this is another role of ours is later in the long run of the game.
game uh, at the 10 minute mark and beyond. You were pretty much, uh, I would say, spamming down uh, low health battleships, and that is your role. Unfortunately, we are spotted here. I have no idea who spotted me. I thought my range was seven. I, I'm not getting spotted by that cruiser. The Gun Lao in the cap, so something else must be here, either a destroyer or a, or a submarine. So we don't know. I mean, I'm going to venture to guess the submarines in the area, so because they're not capping Bravo until that battleship got in. Notice we started to fire again, and we are running away. So this is our, our basically with no smoke. I'm really just through, I mean, full throttle, getting out of dodge, and just really spamming HE on the way out. And it's really deadly to chase a Marceau that's firing at you. And just notice that like, how much damage we can do with the firepower of the Marceau, drawing fire, and as well as starting a lot of fires on their ship. You can notice even with just two guns in the back, I can still get fires going. And ooh, do these torpedoes connect? Ooh, we do! And the torpedo kill with the Marceau, that's exactly why I like it. Splash three for us right there. And we are up to 120,000 damage at eight minutes left in the game. Again, this can still be anybody's game because we're losing Bravo Cap and there is a booster inside of Charlie, so this is still a possibility of a loss here. So we're going to have to do our best to not die and see if we can get some damage on this booster. Look at the arc of those shells, really great. Ooh, I almost get him. Come on, one more shot. Can we get that kill? Oh, man, just barely missing. I don't know why they're not connecting, and thank goodness Minotaur takes out our the Wooster for us. And now we're going to turn back and go for Bravo. So something's in Bravo, and obviously I think that the Colombo out to the west is not is over there. I got the Shimakaze out to the northwest of Alpha, so it must be the submarine or the Gunlau. So I know the submarine is somewhere lurking in the Bravo area. I'm going to be very very careful. Again, I am very cautious about destroy. I'm sorry, submarines, even with the new buff um, to or sorry nerf to submarines or anything 2.9 kilometers or less. The, sub, the torpedoes do 10% damage only. Even with that, I'm still worried because, again, they'll spot us from the moon if we engage, or perhaps even these torpedoes could possibly damage us with us being low health. we got to sa save as much health as we can because your role as a destroyer pilot is to outlast the entire game. So you can continue spotting, continue capping, and literally you're doing everything for everybody because the battleships ain't doing nothing. The cruisers ain't doing nothing. And you pretty much have to go out there and take the fight to the enemy as a destroyer player. So that's, again, that's your role. More in the competitive, I've, as I, you guys have been talking to me in comments and everything, I'm learning that, hey, in, in the Typhoon and Hurricane Leagues, the destroyer player is less of an aggressive player, like as you can see right here, but more of a spotter. Uh, more of a, a uh, cap contester and also a smoke deployer. And you're really playing a lot more conservative and a lot more passive uh, to survive the long run of the game. And I think that is a different play style, in my opinion, and, and I have to learn how to play that way. Uh, so different different aspects, different perspectives. I'm really appreciating you guys telling me about that because I'm always learning. It's something different. And randoms, this is anybody's game. There's nothing at stake. You're just playing for fun and having a great time. You're going to be a little bit more aggressive. But sometimes you do have to take the fight to the enemy, too, and randoms especially, and maybe perhaps in Brawl. Uh, you could have to uh, really take the fight to the enemy and help out your team because sometimes a lot of different player strategies, a lot of different player uh, skill levels, as well as they, they don't, nobody's talking to anybody. They're just playing whatever uh, as a passive game and just letting it turn and kind of unfold and see what happens. But if you really want to secure these wins and you know get these more kills and get your, your rankings up a little higher, and uh, you might have to play something like this for a little bit more aggressive, a little more uh, risky. And just doing what you can to uh, just be that impact in the game. That's why I like being the destroyer player because you, it gives you the ability to make a major impact, as you can see right here. Because again, it's still a neck and neck game, six to four, uh, and there, we're only up by four hundred something points. Look, we just lost a Stalingrad right there, which is incredible. Guten Lao's pretty powerful with those airstrikes, I'm telling you. Right now, I'm debating: Do I want to shoot at this guy? His guns are facing the Colombo there. So why not go loud? He, we missed all our torpedoes. He's kind of just stalling. I don't know what this Columbus is doing way out in the back. He's not really contributing much. But you know what? Let's just use the power and the might of the DPM of the Marceau and see if we can burn this guy down. Watching his guns, watching his guns. Oh, a good destroyer player. Always watching the guns of your enemy. He fires at the Columbo. And, uh, yep, and now he's switching his back. Oh, God, this back turret is switching to us now. Now we have to start doing some evasive maneuvers, maneuvers here. You see him fire immediately, either change vector, change direction, speed up, slow down. He misses us by one, and he only took one shell. That's okay. And we got to kill 1,000 HP off this guy. Get him out of the game. Come on, baby. And there it is. Splash four. Fourth kill of the game. It, uh, unfortunately, he takes out our Columbo. I don't understand that. I, just, I, I don't know how that even happened. I, I wasn't paying attention to him, what his health was. It's unfortunate we had to lose a battleship to that, even though we were helping him out. So what, what would have happened had I not shot at the enemy Columbo? My Columbo would have died either way. So there's a submarine right there. As you can see, that white uh, reflection off the surface. So we know where he's at. 
I'm going to have to make sure I gun him down and make sure the Guten Loud does not survive. I think we're going to lose our Minotaur here, which then will make it a three versus three game with them having a submarine. This is bad news. Come on, Minotaur. Can you kill this guy? Oh, there are the torpedoes. Yep, not fun at all. Submarines, cancer, new cancer of the game. Submarines taking out the Minotaur as well. Now, what do we do in this situation? Do I take out the Guten Loud? Risk showing myself to the submarine at this distance. Notice I have to get within three. In order to mitigate the uh, submarine's uh, torpedoes, might as well go loud. Electric fire right here. Hopefully, the Guten Loud continues to stay spotted. Nobody else is spotting for me. My Jaeger's in alpha capping, so we're going to have to literally eliminate this guy to save our team because then all that's left is a destroyer and a submarine player. The Guten Loud is a deadly combo for our last destroyer players. I want to at least murder this guy as much as I can to get him out of the game. Come on, baby. Up oh, and there's the other destroyer, Shimakaze. He reveals himself. We get a perma fire, I believe. Is that a perma fire? Nope. Yeah, he damage cost. So we got to get one more fire on this guy. Come on, one more fire. Give me a perma damage con. We have to sacrifice. I'm gonna basically sacrifice myself, sacrifice myself to get a kraken and literally eliminate this Guten Lao. Come on, baby. Does this happen? Ooh, and we dodge one of the shells and we dodge the torpedoes. Come on, baby. Turn right. There it is. Okay. Good dodge right there. Oh, he's almost dead. We got to get every single last shot, and this should be the final death blow here. And hopefully, we can dodge this last shell and stay alive. And we get the Kraken, and here we go. Submarine reveals with perfect timing. Oh, and we die, and we drop, what, six depth charges? How many do we get? Come on, baby. Can we get enough depth charges on him? There's one. There's two. Three. And he escaped. I cannot believe he escaped those last few, man. I can't believe it. But anyways, we got that sacrifice, that kill, Kraken, and we win the game. So that was a pretty intense game right there. I enjoy matches like that where it literally means it's coming down to level that wire and you got to do the best you can to survive. What would have happened had we not killed that Columbo or even taken out the Guten Lao? Who knows? It could have been their game or anybody's game so for that matter but as always number one in the team right there fighting for the rest of our buddies and uh kraken on leash so bill will be at the end of the screen again make sure you guys check out my previous video i'll put the link in uh, at the beginning of that video again to uh comment to be a part of the drawing for that free premium duty giveaway to to show my appreciation for helping us get to 2000 subs as always i hope you guys are doing well stay safe you see me out there say hi and as always you guys take care cheers